This box came in the mail like a month ago, so let's finally open it. Any guesses? Here we have a $37 snare drum. So like I said a second ago, I bought this for $37.95 off of Amazon. The shell is 14 by five and a half, and just for comparison, the cheapest new snare I could find from Guitar Center, and that's new, not used, that has a wood shell, and is 14 by five and a half, was $109. So take that for what it's worth. This is an eight lug drum. It has an internal muffler, an oddly placed air vent, it came with a drum key, and if the internal muffler isn't enough, it came with this adhesive backed foam for even more muffling. They actually had a couple of different finishes to choose from, but I chose this flat hickory finish, or wrap really. It's a PVC wrap, and it's probably the most interesting thing about the drum. It has these little grooves cut into it, I guess to resemble the pores and fibers of real wood, so from a distance, it almost looks like real wood and not a wrap. And I was trying to figure out where I've seen something like this before, but then I realized that the flooring, the laminate flooring in the studio, has these same little grooves in it. So the drum may look, you know, halfway decent, but how does it sound? That was pretty horrible, but then again, what do you expect straight out of the box? So let's tighten up the snares, bring the batter head up some, bring the rezzo head up a lot, we want as much snare response as possible, and then do some final tweaking to the batter head. That honestly was not too horrible, and after hearing it, I'm very confident now that I can make the sound really good. I'm going to start by taking this drum apart, and while I do that, I just wanted to say that what I'm going to do to this drum is stuff that anyone and everyone can do. I'm not going to recut the bearing edges, I'm not going to change the shell depth, everything I'm doing is very basic and simple and requires basically no tools. And just a little tip, whenever you take a drum apart, or anything for that matter, you want to stay organized because if you don't, you'll most likely lose something. The first thing I'm going to do is just touch up the bearing edges. This shell is pretty thin and the wood is very soft, and also on top of that the bearing edges are pretty sharp, so that combination doesn't really create a lot of tone for the drum, it just creates a lot of ring. So all I'm doing is hitting the very point of the bearing edge with some sandpaper and just knocking it down a little bit and rounding it over. I'm only using 320 grit because the wood is so soft. I want to say it's basswood. I'm not completely sure, but I know a lot of cheaper drums are made with basswood. But 320 grit sandpaper is a relatively fine grade of sandpaper and you can see it's just eating right through this wood. Another reason for doing this is you want a smooth and even surface on the bearing edge for the head to seat on. And here you can see what it looked like before, it's all rough and jagged and ugly, but after sanding it's nice, smooth, and even. This next step is totally optional and won't improve the sound of this drum at all, but all of the holes for the hardware have these little burrs and fuzzies on them which is really annoying me, so I'm going to take a countersink bit and clean them up. This next step is kind of experimental for me, but I put tongue oil on the inside of the drum. And my thinking behind doing this is that once it dries, it'll harden up some and make the wood not as soft. Polyurethane probably would have been a better option because it doesn't completely soak into the wood. It sits on the outside of it and creates a film finish, but tongue oil is all I had. I also got a little bit on the wrap by accident, and honestly I thought it looked better, so I put a thin coat of it on the wrap. And honestly, this is something I would never do, but just the fact that this wrap is a flat finish and not a gloss finish, I thought I'd try it out.
While that is drying, I'm going to turn my attention to the lugs. On a lot of older drums, as well as cheaper drums like this one, the swivel nut, which is the part that the tension rod screws into, is held in place with a spring. The only problem with these springs though is when you hit the drums, sometimes they'll rattle and vibrate, or you can hear like the springiness of them, which we do not want. And a very simple trick to dampen the spring is just to put a little bit of a cotton ball inside of the lug. So that's what I'm doing here. I just cut up a bunch of cotton balls so they fit inside the lug. And then I'm using this little pick that has a 90 degree bend on it to put the swivel nuts back in the lug because if you have big fingers, it's really annoying to do this. So this pick really helps. And then with the cotton ball and swivel nuts in place, I take a pair of needle nose pliers, compress the spring and poke it back in the lug. I also noticed that some of the springs were kind of loose, which caused the swivel nuts to vibrate a little bit. And fixing that is as simple as just stretching out the spring a little bit. The adjustment screw for the muffler had no sort of washer on it, so it was just this part of the screw, you know, turning and resting or bearing on the wrap, which uh, over time would probably wear it out. So I just found a very small washer that fits over this, and I'll put that on there. So now the bearing, or not the bearing, the, uh, the washer is bearing on the wrap, and it should not wear out as fast. And it turns a whole lot easier now. So if I was to suggest just doing one thing to a snare like this, it would be to get new heads. And that is exactly what I have right here. So I have a Remo Ambassador snare side and a Remo controlled sound coated. And this has been my go-to snare head combination for basically ever. And while I was at it, I got new snares and just like the heads, having high quality snares makes a very big difference. This is a 20 strand wire and it's the Pure Sound Pro series. And just like the heads, this has been my go-to snare wire forever. And none of these tension rods had any sort of lube on them. So as always, white lithium grease to the rescue. Now I know you all are in the middle of typing a comment saying, Dave, what are you doing? Those heads and snares cost way more than the actual drum. Like, what are you thinking? Which yes, that is true. The heads were $35 and the snares were about 20. So that's $55 total, and again, the snare was only $38. But the way I see it is heads and snares are consumables, meaning that over time, no matter the price of the drum, those parts will wear out and need to be replaced. So really, you could use the stock heads and snares, but down the road, they're going to need replacing. And the same statement goes for if you were to buy a $2,600 snare drum. Which, by the way, Tom, if you're trying to uh, hook me up, shoot me an email. So honestly, I would not recommend this snare. Sure, you can squeeze a decent sound out of it, but to me, it's just not worth the money. Even if you're a beginner or on a budget, there are much better options. So if you're trying to find a decent snare for cheap, I would look on the used section of Guitar Center or anywhere else that sells used music gear. You might have to pay 10 or 20 bucks more, but you're not just paying for the sound of the drum, you're paying for the quality of it, which this cheap drum off Amazon definitely lacks. So with that being said, if you do want to purchase this drum, there's a link in the description. Also, I now have this drum and don't really plan on using it that much, so if you have any ideas of what I should do with it, let me know in the comments. 